Coming up, the ProTech Malibu. I get a bevy of Rosecraft traditional knives and the best knives of 2023. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comments from this past week were from a couple from Hero Sticks, our good friend Hero Sticks. He says, I like the look of that propagator. That's a new Civibi, I believe. Apparently, it means a male champion or defender. Clunky word, cool definition. And then he said, again, he comes back and says, forgive me, bit of a word nerd, uh, but a natter is a UK term for an adder snake. And a natter is also a type of dragon in most fantasy realms. So I'm always going off about the weird names we're hearing from Civibi, like the keen natter. I, I had some idea, some inkling that it had to do with a snake. Uh, I didn't know about the dragons. Very cool. And yeah, propagator. I could have just looked up. I'm sure it's there in the dictionary. But uh, male champion or defender. Great definition. Clunky word. Uh, thanks, Hero Sticks. Appreciate those. And then we got another comment that I liked uh, from Brandon Maples. And uh, it was a comment on the uh, Thursday Night Knives excite me about modern folders. Same. I've lost a lot of interest in folders. More excited about fixed blades, especially TKL. Well, I can definitely concur with you on the TKL train. And I've been very into fixed blades, but recently very into slip joints. So folders indeed, but just kind of uh, um, I've been not as interested as the titanium frame locks, if you will, uh, except. Uh, there's an exception to that in today's lineup of best knives of 2023. Well, there are a couple of them, actually. All right. Uh, well, I think it might be time to get to a pocket check. My front right pocket, I had the awesome Spyderco Yo Jumbo. A uh, beautiful knife designed by Michael Janich. This is the big brother of his uh, Yojimbo 2. Uh, the Yojimbo 2, incidentally, is uh, so much of a better knife, if you ask me, so much a better design than the Yojimbo 1. Uh, I've held both in hand, and, uh, and just looking at them, uh, the Yojimbo 2 was definitely a very well-earned and uh, nicely done 2. And then the Yojumbo, awesome. And now they have the uh, the mini Jimbo. Is that what they're calling it? Uh, I probably won't get that. But the Yojumbo and the Yojumbo are classics. That's just terrible left-hand manipulation. Uh, this one, I took down that middle finger partition. Uh, for me, it's, just, it's much more comfortable like that. And then I put on an MXG gear clip, which used to be all the rage for me. But now with the, how thick they are and the button locks, they're they're cool. They're fine. Um, but they are a little high profile on the pants. Uh, so you do have to be careful with the pockets. So uh, Yojumbo, uh, in the little uh, leather pocket carrier thing I have with my space pen and my little uh, IT5 light, I had the Feel Good Jack here from Jack Wolf Knives, um, the classic doctor's knife with the nearly parallel spine and uh and belly portion of the handle terminating with a totally flat end for crushing up pills um traditionally this had two different tools a blade spear point blade and a sort of spatula that you would use to stir up the crushed pills in tinctures you'd be making on your house calls uh, but i love this knife i it's a very svelte uh but long and capable uh knife so it's uh, it's got everything you want in a slip joint because it tucks away very easily being very thin, but it also gives you that nice broad hollow ground uh, sheep's foot blade, we'll call it. Very nice action on that, by the way. All right, next up, uh, speaking of TKL knives, I had my Night Stalker on the belt today. Uh, just one of my favorite, favorite, favorite fixed blade knives to carry because it just disappears on the waist, but is so easy to retrieve, whether it's in, for me, um, saber grip on the left hand side or reverse grip on the main 
right hand side and just a very very comfortable knife and a great knife uh, just to use to pull out to use it yes it's uh, highly capable as a defensive weapon but uh, just as a knife to pull out and use for whatever you need your knives for it's great and so are all the other tkels uh, with one exception i'd say the guardian and the guardian like knives uh, those are very much intended to be skin splitting weapons they are not meant to cut anything other than humans so um with that with that exception uh i would say all tkel knives are just great on the belt utility knives okay uh lastly i had emotional support in my off-grid stinger edc today i've had this a few weeks now uh this is the the new one that came out with the uh cayman xxl bowie uh drop this is the small version, the three inch version of the four inch Stinger. Four inch Stinger has a very, very similar handle. I would say exactly the same, um, just larger by whatever percentage. Uh, but that blade is different on the Stinger EDC. This is more of a drop point. The other is a spear point bayonet ground. So it's got a full swedge up to about uh, a thumb's length up the, up the back of the blade. And it has a center, you know, medial ridge where the two grinds meet. Uh, even though it's one of the most oblique of the off-grid knives, folders, grinds, it's still wickedly thin and extremely capable uh, as a cardboard cutter, for instance. And this little fully flat ground version of that knife is, I would say, right there. It's just as uh, just as slippery through the through the materials. Uh, I love this one, and it all. They, they also sent me a black one, which we will be giving away here. So this is what I had in my pocket. Let me know what you had. Drop it down below. I had the Yo Jumbo. I had the Feel Good Jack, the Night Stalker from T Kel, and the new Stinger EDC from Off Grid Knives. Now available. Also, uh, just to note, we have a an affiliate link with Off Grid Knives. So uh, if you like them, if you want to buy any off-grid knife, you can go to thenifejunkie.com slash off-grid. That will take you to a page. You could buy your off-grid knife. And then somewhere down the road, we get a couple of, couple of cents there. So uh, it's a nice little program. And uh, do check it out if you have the desire or the means. Okay, next up, I just want to take a brief moment to talk about a couple of traditional knives that... Uh, have proven themselves to be absolute cardboard devourers in the last 24 hours. And the first is going to be on the Jumbo Stockman from Case. Uh, I, I, I hear some of the eye rolling. I know a lot of people don't like Case. Um, I guess I can understand. I, I am in a Case mode. I, I, uh, I've always loved them, especially their carbon steel models. Uh, they don't make too many of them, and they seem to spend special attention on them. They're always super sharp uh, and never have any trouble. Like, the heat treat on this is proven to me now, uh, especially on this blade here, uh, the sheep's foot. Yesterday, I had we had so many Amazon boxes. Uh, the Christmas presents are coming in from my grandparents, or from my parents, who are early... <laughs> You know, they get the Christmas presents out early. So we've got all those boxes to break down. And uh, it's my daughter's birthday. So we have all those boxes to break down. And I used this and wanted to see how long the edge I put on it. Didn't come with a great edge would last. And it it lasted through more cardboard boxes than I expected and just kept coming. This is 1095, I believe now is what they're using in uh, in case carbon steel blades. So yeah, I'm loving this one, the, especially that sheep's foot did a great job. It's kind of angled down. So I like to cut court cardboard by pulling towards me. And uh, this works great because it traps the material in that space there. Great knife. Um, oh, I like it. You might not like it, but I have a special place in my heart for case. Uh, and then next up, uh, as I mentioned up front, I got a bunch of Rosecraft blades. Well, three, and they're all awesome. But this one is really cool. This is the one I almost didn't get because it's kind of funky looking. Uh, this is the um, uh, Kayak, the o Okosi. Uh, o oh, I don't, I I'm sorry. I'm having a blank on how to pronounce that. But it is a river. Uh, and Rosecraft names their knives after rivers, which I think is cool. Uh, somewhere in the south. And this is a Kayak. And it's the take. it's a take on... Uh, the canoe. Look at the the handle shapes. Very similar. Very similar. Designed by uh, designed by Andy Armstrong. Uh, they were doing. He was designing. I believe. I think he designed the kayak for Case. 
plus case reserve or not case um rough rider reserve before rosecraft and brought that handle design and blade but made the blade a little more robust and gave it that nice belly and that severe sort of downward angle this thing is amazing especially in that sort of pull cut scenario i was just going through so uh, this is d2 and a little bit fatter a blade than this you can, it feels different uh but the broadness of the blade the super sharpness of it and that d2 holds a great edge uh so these two were on cardboard duty uh, i gotta say the case did more uh i used the case more than i did this but i was so um impressed by also the the uh, action and the lock on this is very stout so there was no a couple of times i had this happen with with this knife when i was going through thick cardboard and maybe i hesitated or jerked back and it would get stuck and that happened maybe two or three times um nothing that i was concerned about in terms of cutting me but uh, that did not happen with this at all it's a very stout lock up um you know for a non-locking knife and then the the ergonomics it's so comfortable uh it's just a funky looking knife i think that's why it's kind of always available i would check it out if you have any interest in rose craft blades if you like them or have not yet uh you know gotten your feet wet with them get that knife that is a really that kayak is a very cool knife and and very capable and beautiful to look at the bone the red bone is really gorgeous all right uh, before we move on to life knife news knife life news i want to talk about the upcoming very exciting giveaway for the uh, gentleman junkie this is your opportunity to win a malibu in uh, reverse tanto here beautiful new brand new malibu inbox from our good friends at northern knives uh northern knives they they join us a lot on thursday night knives great conversation uh great taste in knives they have a really cool outfit up there in anchorage alaska and um yeah I, i'm i'm very interested in uh, finding out more about them someday uh, perhaps i meet them in person up in their turf that would be very cool uh this is 20 cv this is like the original amazing uh flipper button lock it is really astounding it's protec you know protec's been making button locks forever just in that automatic format so i don't think it was too much of a, a jump but they really uh they really nailed the detent on this one just just incredible crisp detent i like to hold this one up to the mic because it sounds so nice opening up in that aluminum handle anyway uh if you are a gentleman junkie that's a uh that is a supporter uh, on patreon at the ten dollar level that's our top tier uh, you will automatically be uh, in the running to win this on uh, thursday december 21st just an absolutely beautiful knife thank you very much northern knives Okay, that is uh, that is it for uh, this section of Knife Junkie Podcast. Coming up, we're going to take a look at some new knives coming out on the market in Knife Life News. Among this week's specials at Knives Ship Free, the new Military 2 platform has a new finish that just arrived. Digi Camo G10 with black DLC blade coating. The look is completed with black hardware, liners, and pocket clip. The Bark River Knives Micro Canadians are now available. And this time, they're in CPM 3V steel. The shallow finger grooves and streamlined shape of this model allow it to remain ultra compact but still provide a usable three finger grip, and it weighs only 1.4 ounces. And Knife Ship Free is having a sale on the Spyderco Thin Red Line and Thin Blue Line knives that feature their lightweight FRN with Combo Edge VG10 blades. Grab one for 30% off while you still can. Get these deals and other great specials from our friends at Knife Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, thenifejunkie.com slash kniveshipfree. That's thenifejunkie.com slash kniveshipfree. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time, thenifejunkie.com slash kniveshipfree. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast, and now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Brand new from Spartan Blades. I always love saying that because I love Spartan Blades. Uh, they have something brand new. It's a collaboration with the Czech or the founder of the Czech company. He's a co-founder of the Czech company, um, Acta Non Verba, ANV. Really beautiful uh, combat knives, especially their daggers, in, in my opinion. Uh, but they have uh, teamed up with him to produce this. This is either in G10 or 
in textured G10 or in textured uh, titanium. It is called the Nemec because uh, the gentleman's name is Andre Nemec. Uh, and I'm looking at it and I'm seeing a gentleman's folder. I'm seeing a CEO style folder. I'm seeing a Ocaso uh, Solstice style folder. Something totally unexpected uh, to me from Spartan Blades. Um, but it is beautiful. It is sleek. And it perhaps it's for the owner of a contracting company, uh, you know, military contracting company who's uh, got uh, who's got the important meetings he's got to go to in a suit and needs something light and capable. Uh, I, I, I say that sort of jokingly, but that's that's how I see this. To me, it's a very uh, uh, sleek sleek uh modern gents folder uh that's three and a half inches of s35 vn uh tie or i'm sorry i said g10 it's carbon fiber or tie liner lock with a milled texture those are available now uh always exciting to see new spartan collaborations because they they mine some of the best talent out there and uh this is an, an interesting uh, I don't want to say departure. It's an interesting addition to their lineup. All right, next up is the Kaiser Huntsman. Uh, this one's an interesting one. I, I can't tell if I like it or not. I got to be honest. I, I like its uh, audacity. And uh, there, there was a time in the past where I think I would have gone totally bonkers over the blade. But uh, this is from James Lowe, uh, designer James Lowe. And it's named after the Huntsman Spider, a giant, nasty, nasty creature. I used to be terribly arachnophobic. Now I'm just only sort of arachnophobic. Uh, when I moved to Philadelphia and discovered cockroaches, well, that dis disaffected me of a lot of my arachnophobia. Anyway, this one is uh, is as big and mean looking as its namesake. Look it up. It's a terrifying spider. Uh, it's 3.82 inches of S35VN. It, now a, just a stolid classic. That's almost kind of like D2 at this point, but I love it. Uh, very cool blade shape. I'm not a big fan of windows through blades or multiple holes through blades. Uh, a, an opening hole is fine to me, but that I'm not so crazy about. Uh, I do like the external stop pins slash thumb studs and the handle widens out in a sort of pleasing way. It looks uh, a bit like the, um, uh, the Evo, uh, or, uh, or maybe a little bit of a strider, uh, but interesting knife. I just like seeing that they do interesting blades over there at Kaiser and are always willing to take chances, even on their high-end uh, titanium sculpted uh, affairs like this. Uh, this one is coming soon. All right, next up, this is an exciting one. Actually, I have an opportunity to get the folding brother of this one, uh, but right now I'm not made of money, so... I think I might have to say no to that. But uh, this is the Emerson Knives Tim Kennedy Fix Blade. Uh, we all know Tim Kennedy, uh, total stud extraordinaire. He was a, uh, a Green Beret. He still is, I guess. And uh, MMA fighter. He was in the UFC for, for a brief period of time. And he's also sort of a political commentator. Interesting guy. Uh, well, this is his second collaboration with Emerson Knives. And uh, this is a beautiful uh 4.8 inch fixed blade version of his uh, folder i i love it i love the long slender lines of it it's like a fighting buoy it's like a hell's bells or, or something like that i i like that style of buoy and you need a little bit of length to really express uh that style um otherwise it's going to be frighteningly thin and you don't want that uh but yeah that long tapered fighting style that's uh oh, i think it's a beauty i'm i'm rarely shall i say tempted by emerson fixed blades but this one is uh i don't know strumming strumming some heartstrings here it's the usual 154 cm that's how they do it and that's how they do it and they know 154 cm g10 as usual chisel edge uh with a saber grind uh, on both sides v grind kydex coming soon to a knife store near you. Okay, last up here is one I will be able to show you in person in a few minutes, but this is definitely newsworthy. It's Jack Wolf Knives' second locking folder. Man, alive is this gorgeous. Uh, um, ben Belkin just proving his talent once again uh, is not, he's not just a one trick pony. He's not just amazing at designing traditional style slip joints. And by that, I mean using the kick 
and not the not a stop pin, uh, as well as some other factors. Uh, not only is he a master at designing those, uh, but he has proven himself uh, with the gunslinger, and now again with the after hours jack that he can make a design a beautiful and and dare I say perfect front front flipping folder. Uh, this thing is awesome. I, I'm really thrilled about it. I can't wait to show you mine. Uh, but it is uh, in carbon fiber. I think they've got two different versions of carbon fiber on this one. They have this gorgeous kieranite as pictured here. That uh, that lime and black swirl kieranite. It's just beautiful next to the uh, black anodized titanium and the DVD uh, <laughs> DVD coated blade. PVD coated blade, and uh, they also feature a smooth uh, tie, which I will show you in a minute, and a jigged titanium. The jigged titanium is raw with a um, with a satin ground blade, I believe. Uh, Three point one four inches of S ninety V, super thin and awesome uh, in terms of the grind, and it will be available as you are hearing this. Uh, if you're hearing this the the day it's dropped the day after tomorrow but uh december 15th 2023 these go live so uh do check out your favorite purveyors uh he is selling these knives he's got a lot of dealers uh he's got a, an expanded capacity so you don't have to uh uh sit there constantly refreshing to get a jack wolf knife which is so thrilling for both ben and his business but also for us uh who like to buy his knives all right. Thank you very much for joining us uh, for Knife Life News. Uh, let us get to the state of the collection. But before we do, I just want to say again, uh, I, thank you for your support. I appreciate it. Thanks for the likes and the comments. I appreciate it. Thanks for, for checking out Patreon uh, with the QR code or, or the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, um, I'm very much looking excited, <laughs> looking excited, looking forward to another uh Great year seeing what's coming uh, next from uh, from the makers and from the companies. And I'm starting to see some of that drip out and it's very exciting. So uh, uh, stick with us. All right. Still to come, we're going to take a look at some new Rosecraft knives and a case right here on the Knife Junkie podcast. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. I mentioned before I was waxing poetic about the beautiful red bone on the kayak here from Rosecraft Blades. And man, is it nice. Now, I think that they do a really, really stellar job with their, with their bone dying. Look at that. Okay, so I got this knife. I put the little leather fob on there. Um, this one is, I've been carrying it just dropped in the pocket. Uh, it does fit in my little uh, in my little leather case thing that I keep in my pocket. It does fit in there, uh, but I, I just drop it in. It bangs around the pocket. It's not so long that if it goes horizontally, it's too much of a bother, uh, even though I will obsessively reposition it. Uh, but the fob kind of keeps it, oriented north to south in my pocket because it grabs on a little bit and so i like that but what you can see here when i hold this and then and hold it upside down like that it kind of makes it more apparent that curve so when you're holding this knife like any other knife it the blade dips down like a kukri or a recurve in, a, in in essence uh also puts that point down real low so so doing any sort of draw cut with the tip uh, is just so easy and and you are set up and if you as i said before if you have reservations because it's it's weird a little bit weird looking man let those go because this is a this is a great knife and i'm really excited about rosecraft blades uh, i hope not too excited because you know where that leads uh, but here's the other one um, that i find really stunning this is the french broad jack uh, I've made jokes like, oh, French broad. It's like, a, you know, a lady. It's not the French broad. I I'm just a barbarian. 
and the French Broad is a river. These are all named after rivers. And uh, as, as far as I know, I think the slip, most of the slip joints, or if not, because the, the surgeon's knife, oh, maybe that is too. Any case, uh, a really beautiful design. This reminds me of the um, 38 from uh, GEC, especially the 38 special like uh, I had from, I don't know, 2018. Mine has a clip point, but it's same sort of handle, same sort of uh, serpentine, maybe that is, handle that really fits nicely, uh, especially in the back grip. And then here it gives you a little more meat to pinch onto. Uh, these have amazing walk and talk. Uh, and by that, I mean, not only um, do they make nice sounds and have crisp action, but they have a really nice retention when they're open. Of course, they're not locked open and you can close them one handed, which is nice. Uh, but when they're open, they're very stoutly open. You can push on the back like that. And you know, if you're using the knife properly, it's not going to be an issue because you're not going to be using the spine of your folder, especially your slip joint folder. But look at the die job on this. They call this one, uh, I think this is candy apple red. God, man, that's gorgeous. I really, I really like it. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very much looking forward to the, uh, the, what is that Barlow called that they have the clip point coming back out. That is a nice one too. And in a really nice orange jigged bone. Okay. The last one I got from them is, is a $15, um, keychain knife called the Awanada. And man, it's, this is also a great knife. Uh, this is purple G10. It comes in six different colors fully contoured beautifully contoured g10 and has a i was expecting it to have the feel of say like a bug out like just light and and kind of chintzy but it, it's really sturdy like you can't squeeze that shut and then it has a really nice pull it's got like an eight pull or so seven or so seven or eight opening it up and it's a little easier to close i guess but uh this fuller here acts as a pull very nice um sort of catch there and you can just rip it and grip it uh, pull it right open and it's a great little utility knife it's about an inch and a half of cutting edge that's d2 like everything else from them uh at least in this realm here and a great way to spend 15 bucks especially if you need a little knife like that uh, in your life. This is a really good one. And they, you can buy it, I think for 76 bucks, you can get all six and get them in all the different colors. And, uh, and then you can have an excuse to have these cool little utility knives stashed all around the place in the car, in the kitchen, you know, in the utility room, wherever. I put a colorful little fob on mine. All right. Uh, last up in, er, I'm going to close this in front of the mic so you can fully appreciate. So these use a stop pin instead of, a, instead of the kick. I'm going to put this under the camera real quick. You see that right where my thumb is? That, that bright line is a stop pin. Uh, so when you close it, it engages with the sharpening notch there and it stops the blade, meaning it will never recoil against the back spring. With a traditionally designed slip joint knife here, let me use the uh, traditionally designed slip joint knife like this uh, Jack Wolf knife. It's the height of this kick, this part of the ricasso that hits the back part of the spring. And it's the height of that which determines whether or not it slaps into the lock. And, and there's a lot more play in that sort of... Uh, design it, it takes way more refinement i would say uh to get it so that it you can get as much blade in the blade well as possible without it ricocheting across uh, against the back and that's where the real skill comes in i i gotta say not that there's not real skill in designing these at all these are also amazing but there is a certain uh delineation in the designs there and i think it's uh it's interesting i love them both all right, lastly, something I've wanted for years and finally pulled the trigger on, a case canoe. Um, as I mentioned up front, I love case knives. Um, I, I love them for their 
their aesthetics, really their bone. Uh, and then, and then, you know, their bone, their, their, uh, dye jobs and all this, all the handle materials they use, but mostly the way they do their bone. Um, and they really remind me of my grandpa. They always have and always will. And, uh, something I love about the carbon steel knives is that they make fewer of them and they seem to, to lavish them with more attention. Like, uh, rarely do I see gaps on any of my, um, carbon steel uh, case knives and uh, this is also no exception so the canoe is called a canoe because if you look at the handle it's canoe shaped with those bolsters that come up uh, traditional canoe has a large spear point main blade and i love the uh indian in the canoe etch on this one it's it just reminds me of how old timey this knife is uh, and then it has a pen blade on the other side. And I wasn't sure uh, if it would be sharing the same spring or not, but they do not. Uh, they both have their own independent springs. So great knife, really nice walk and talk on this. Uh, again, it, did, it came with a case edge, which means I had to take it to the stone for a little while. Uh, it was sharp and it would uh, it was jaggedly sharp, I guess you, you could say. Um, that's how case knives have come to me recently. I've gotten a few new ones recently, and they've all been kind of, mm, the edge is not very refined. They're sharp, uh, but sort of field grade sharp. Uh, but once once you get their, they're now using 1095 as their carbon steel. Uh, I think before it was 1075, but in any case, uh, as, as my jumbo trapper proved, or my jumbo stockman proved, uh, they, they do a great, they do do a, a good heat treat on the carbon steels. All right, that's enough of that. So uh, the case canoe, I'm very excited about that. I'm going to try and keep it pristine. I don't, I don't think I want it to patina because I don't want to eventually polish off that Indian. I like the Indian. All right, now it's time for me to show you what I think are the best knives of 2023. You know, uh, I wanted to make this list. And before I started, I thought, oh, I didn't get too many knives this year. Like, what do I have to show for, you know, new knives of 2023 uh, that aren't custom fixed blades or, or something? And um, I realized, uh, yeah, you did. You got quite a few knives that were released in 2023. And here are your top favorites. This is a baker's dozen. Uh, so hang in there with me. Uh, but uh, a, a very handsome baker's dozen at that. What? I think I got something. Oh, okay. I thought I got a scratch on my new Jack Wolf and it caught my eye. Sorry about that. Okay. First up, this one I'm extremely impressed with. This came out at the beginning of the year and uh, it took me almost all year to get it. Uh, but I've carried it so much. I love it. It is the aluminum handled iridium. I mean, I guess they're all alum aluminum handled. So that was a weird way to... Uh, differentiated it, I, I guess i should say it's the black iridium the iridium a new folder uh for the 2023 model year uh for kershaw has this uh, crossbar lock has a really beautiful um spear point blade that evokes the um some of the knives from 2020 like the lucha has a similar uh, blade to the lucha and swedge and i really like it uh, it's got a slight downward curve and a belly uh, making it a very good cutter in this region as you can see i've used this a lot for cardboard uh it this coating marred surprisingly quickly uh i don't mind it because it looks like i've had it for years and i've used it for all these adventures uh, but really i've just cut a whole bunch of cardboard with it but i was surprised kind of how quickly uh, the black coating marred, but didn't bother me. Uh, very nicely gentled, gently contoured handles. Uh, feel great in hand with that uh, anodizing. And I got to say, they have nailed the crossbar lock. It is totally solid and uh, including up and down, which is where you sometimes get action in a uh, in crossbar lock. But uh, to me, I like it even better than Hogue. I'll be 100% honest. It's my, it's my, my favorite one. <laughs> it's my favorite crossbar lock is right here on the Iridium. Very nicely done. And that is 14C28 D2. It is D2. <laughs> great steel, uh, great knife. And this thing um, just keeps an edge for a long time too. 
Very nice knife. All right. Next up, speaking of Hogue and uh, not speaking ill of Hogue, certainly. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of my favorite knives from this year was produced by Hogue. It is the Ritter Hogue um, Auto RSK Mark I. Uh, has all of the, the greatness of the RSK Mark I uh, regular folder, but, but with some refinements. The one obvious refinement or change, I should say, is the coil spring out the side um, uh, automatic action that uh, Hogue Knives is so good at. So uh, that's really great. The uh, The steel has been upgraded. That is uh, that is Magna Cut. This has some schmutz on it from the last time I used it. Uh, Magna Cut steel that have it uh, to 6364, I believe. Uh, Rockwell hardness, uh, even their deep carry clip. I, I feel like they've increased the gauge of the metal of their deep carry clip. Still on that post, still with those nubby, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, screws. They should really consider going flat with those, especially given how tactical this is and how a lot of tactical people with thick pants, you know, or or Carhartts or something might wear this. Uh, but, you know, not a deal breaker. A very nice standoffs. This one's got a lot of dust. I've carried it a lot. It's got a lock. But another enhancement or refinement, I should say, is the texturing. Uh, that radial sunburst texturing has been knocked down a little bit. It's not such a pocket destroyer, but it still grips the hand really well. Um, so this is an awesome knife. It, every time you buy one of these, it, this is a KnifeWorks exclusive. Every time you buy a, a Ritter Hogue, and you can only get those at KnifeWorks, uh, you're putting money in the pocket of the man who is fighting for our knife rights. You know, it's not a direct donation to knife rights, but it it is paying his bills, which allows him to fight that fight. So whether you're donating, and I, you should, if if you have the means or the desire, you, sh you should donate to knife rights, but also you should have this knife. It is so awesome. Or one of the knives from this uh, series. Just great, great knives. And that contoured handle is also just so comfortable. You could use this all day long. All right. Next, uh, probably my favorite folder this year has been this, uh, the Kaiser Mystic. I, I've i carried this thing so much. I love it so much. That's a Rex 45 blade, which I originally forced a patina on and then polished it off. And uh, some patina is coming back now, or I'm starting to to put a little patina on it. I want it to happen naturally. It looked kind of cheesy when I forced it. But Rex 45, super, uh, super hard steel. And uh, I can't remember how high this is uh, on the Rockwell hardness, but uh, a very loved steel and apparently a pretty difficult one to sharpen. Uh, so comes razor sharp. I don't really see the need. Uh, I haven't used it that hard yet, um, but just a beautiful Paul Munko design uh, called the mystic after mystic Connecticut, where he hails from and uh, designed to sort of evoke the whaling industry sort of looks like a whale kind of with that arced uh, form, but also uh, has some of the characteristics of whaling equipment there's a harpoon there a little on the nose but i don't think that that was the intention um but you know it just kind of looks like a piece of whaling kit to me it's like it could be hanging on a wall of a cool uh a mystic connecticut uh you know sort of clapboard whaling shack or it could be in the pocket of a of a <laughs> of a bougie uh suburban knife collecting dad uh, just kidding. I'm not bougie, but love this thing. Uh, one of my favorite knives in my collection period, and definitely, uh, probably my favorite, uh, locking folder of the year. Love it. That's linen micarta, by the way. Another favorite from a, a favorite guy slash designer is the Dirk Pinkerton night horse. This one is the asymmetrical version. Uh, it also comes in a, uh, this This is S35 VN in titanium. This one happens to be a prototype that I bought from Dirk himself, uh, which is pretty cool. Very honored to have this. Uh, but this is what the production is like, and it's solid titanium handle slabs. Um, S35 VN, great bearing action, beautiful titanium uh, sculpted clip. One of the best clips. I love how it just sort of, matches in with the whole thing but that shape 
is evocative of the great Navaja, the big folding locking knife that Spaniards started carrying to settle their scores when they could no longer carry uh, rapiers and swords. Uh, I love this modernization of it. I love that long, flat Spanish clip point blade, that downward sweeping edge. Uh, this thing is just beautiful to look at, fun to carry, and and also just a deadly knife. I mean, this is definitely a uh, a fighting knife, and, and and I don't mean necessarily this particular thing, but the the whole setup, you know, with the way the horn shaped handle is, and everything about the Navaja is uh, built for speed. And I love how asymmetrical, who is Beyond EDC. Beyond EDC is the, is the parent company. And then they have a line called Beyond EDC that is sort of their uh, most budget friendly. Then they have asymmetrical where they step up the materials to titanium and S35. And then they have the Terramundi, uh, like the uh, John Demko River Wolf is made by that that line. And uh, it's, e it's an even higher level of production. Um, in terms of materials and and hand finishing all right next up one from a, a company that has been ever so impressive always and getting always i just love them um they're, they're not getting better i think i'm just liking them more and that's civivi uh this is the civivi sentinel strike i got a couple that could have made this list uh i love that synergy four um and uh several others but uh, at the tomashi e but I'm not sure. Uh, this one to me is just 2023 for Civivi. I know a lot of people love the the Cubid or the Quibid, Cubid, uh, which looks great. Uh, it's also a button lock aluminum handle, but it's just too small, and the and the blade to handle ratio <laughs> annoys me. So I know I would never carry it. Uh, um, but this is kind of the tactical uh, or almost the Klingon version of that because it's got a similar construction, though this one does have this integral back strap, which is really cool. It's one piece of GRN that's sculpted and fits over the top. So it's uh, an integral back strap, uh, um, very similar to reminiscent of the um, some of the Wii's that came out this year that had that integral backstrap, albeit those were made of uh, Zerkutai and all sorts of exotic materials. But that's what I love about Civivi. They 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 do all sorts of stuff down here on this level. Uh, they take a lot of chances down here on this level, but they also give us some of those super premium things uh, for a lot less money. Um, God, I, I love this knife. I think it's uh, beautiful to look at and so super useful. This has got a bunch of use too, but you can see, unlike that, unlike that iridium, you can barely see any markings on that blade. Uh, could that be because they stonewashed it after they coated it? I'm not sure. Uh, but the Sentinel Strike is a great one and comes in a multitude of colors. So uh, actually, I say a multitude, not too many, but Others than uh, more than this, you know, some Civivis come in wood and in G10 and in Micarta and this and that. This comes in like three or four different colors. All right. Next up, this is uh, one we were just talking about. And man, it's hard to pick a favorite Jack Wolf knife of the year. Um, and that's me. I, I and the reason I say it that way is because, you know, I want multiples of those to be on this list because especially in my slip joint phase, I mean. He just gives me the he just gives me the stuff I need, man. And but this just takes the damn cake. I think everyone wanted this. Uh, this is the folding version of the of the um, midnight jack. This is the after hours jack. A beautiful uh, three point one five inch S ninety V bolster lock that I can't do with my left hand. I love using the fullers on this. Um, but it is a front flipper. It is a um, fuller flipper. It is fully hollow ground. This one, as you can see, is uh, anodized black, and then it has this PVD coating, um, super thin and just a slicey blade. Um, to me, this is kind of, uh, this is a perfect little folder. This is one that uh, is only, just barely over three inches, but has uh, taken over uh, front right hand pocket duty. 
uh, several days in a row. And that is like never happens. Uh, so to me, that's an impressive thing. Something about this knife uh, is so badass. And I think the black uh, definitely helps uh, that image. But with the Kiranite, the, the yellow Kiranite, it looks beautiful. With the, uh, with the various carbon fibers, it looks beautiful. Uh, but I got to say, this black titanium, man, does it really work on this design. Uh, I always think that uh, Ben's sheep foot blades, whether it's on, on this knife or on the um, Feel Good Jack, they look like locomotives. They look like Art Deco locomotives racing uh, you know, towards the towards the frame. Um, anyway, beautiful knife, beautiful knife. And you can really gauge how straight that edge is by uh, when you have that black coating. Very nice to look at. Great action. Love me the Jack Wolf knives. And I got to say the after hours Jack and the gunslinger, the two folders have really, really uh, kind of shocked me with how good they are. Really like them. Uh, also, makes me consider carrying more small folders uh, in the future. Next up, this one I've talked about a couple of times here now, uh, but this is definitely on my list. I, I wanted to put uh, one of one of these um, one of these uh, two Rosecrafts in. I got to say, I've used the uh, kayak a lot more. I, I've carried the French broad jack, but I, I really this past weekend used this thing a lot and it it proved itself i knew that one of these was going to be in there because of how appealing they are and how high quality they are uh, but then once i used uh used this one for quite a bit uh it, it won me over uh, so that is the kayak uh, you can get a kayak style knife as i mentioned from um rough rider reserve and that one has two of this style this one you cannot pinch open two of this style blade though they are smaller and Svelter, and it, it kind of looks clunky. Uh, but here, I believe Andy Armstrong has really refined that kayak aesthetic. That sounded fancy. All right, next up from uh, our good friend Austin Jackson over at C. Reisner Cutlery. Um, this Lake Champlain Barlow really, really won my heart. Uh, very big, very snappy. Um, slip joint knife uh, barlow you can see that is a three and a half inch blade this is no shrinking violet here a very big knife uh, for a slip joint but it has a, a spring that is commensurate spring strength commensurate with its size uh, so make sure your fingers aren't in the way when you're closing it but it's going to stay open for you when you're using it 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 comes in this you can get this only at traditionalpocketknives.com uh, designed by by austin jackson of c reisner cutlery and uh, it comes in this clip point or sheep's foot and man i gotta say i've been really uh my eye has been wandering to the sheep's foot but i do have a wandering eye when it comes to knives uh we got that full, beautiful back strap that's like so nicely hafted and uh, a, a almost half of the length here uh, is that titanium bolster. Really nice uh, micarta. The micarta was green, but just was mostly just gray. So I dyed it with indigo writ dye and made it my own. And I absolutely love this thing. And this is a beast of a folder uh, of, of a slip joint. Look at those. And this is that modern style using the uh, stop pin. You can see it right there where my thumb is. So that thing is so strong, that spring is so strong, but it's never gonna hit the back. Okay, one that I got this year that uh, is just blown up. I'm so happy and so excited to see this. Steve Kalari Custom Knives. Um, he started, Steve Kalari, Super Steel Steve, started making knives this year. Uh, late late last year, I believe. I got this one this year. And uh, this is one of his 8-inch chef's knives. He has a couple of different designs. Uh, he starts all of his videos like this. 
where he comes out from his etch. Uh, it's nice to have an early one. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting another one one of these days. He does exquisite handles. In my case, I asked for uh, a um, antique micarta, and this is a sort of a chocolate brown antique micarta and beautiful black and white spacers. This is our family kitchen knife, as you can tell. That's 8670, I believe it's called, 8670 Steel. I think you can only get it at Pops uh, Knife Supply. That's a very famous place among knife makers. I think they're in Georgia or in North Carolina. Uh, super thin. That's a 16th of an inch, I believe. Thin and very broad and fully flat ground. So it's like it's like hair thin behind the edge. Uh, this is wearing kind of an ugly patina, but it's a patina that works uh, just as long as my wife doesn't wash it and leave it in the cutting board. Um, we've, we've done that several times, but we have st stopped doing that. Um, I'll just take it and polish it, but I hate seeing the red, the red rust on this on this blade so thin that when it's dull it still cuts like it's sharp uh, so i highly highly recommend uh, you seek these out i'm sure they've gone up a little bit in price but very reasonably priced uh, steve Kalari, uh, he's been on the show a couple of times he was a professional chef for many years and now he manages kitchens uh, so he has the tests these in the in this crucible he has uh you know his friends bang them around in the kitchen um, they take all sorts of abuse and shock, and he's got the heat treat down. Uh, they hold an edge great, but they're also like very tough. Um, you know, they can take dropping and all the banging into metal and marble and stuff that happens to knives in kitchens. So um, I highly recommend you see you see God Steve Kalari custom knives. Also, he does a great pairing knife. Uh, that is the knife that uh, my daughters like to use because it's smaller. All right, next up, this one just dropped and is very exciting to me. Um, I'm a, a big fan of auxiliary manufacturing. I've been carrying the Pocket Rocket 3-inch dagger for a year uh, in appendix uh, very frequently. Love that knife. And I love his, I love all of his knives and his clean aesthetic. And, and he's another guy who makes awesome kitchen knives, but he's way more focused on his EDC fixed blades these days. Uh, auxiliary manufacturing, Michael Jarvis, he just dropped this pocket Bowie and I am in love with this thing. First of all, here it is in its little sheath. Uh, this I have carried actually just dropped in the pocket like this several times. It works, um, actually quite nicely next to a, a folder in my right pocket. I know that's weird to double up like that, but I, I need my left pocket available for my phone. So, um, but I'm going to I'm going to shock cord this. I'm going to put the uh, 550 and just wear it in the waistband. Um, but it tugs right out. And here it is. Beautiful little recurve. Oh, I love this. This is AEBL stainless steel. And uh, it's got a full swedge. It's a nice thick chunk. It's about uh, actually I'm not sure how thick that is. Uh, obviously, it's less than a quarter inch, but it's it's pretty thick. Um, oh, three sixteenths of an inch. <laughs> Durr. I'm, I'm just remembering the birth card now. Uh, but look at this. It, it's got a coffin shaped handle, which is a classic Bowie shape. But who knew it would fit so nicely as a small uh, handle? We always think of a coffin shape as uh, th that swelling out at the end being sort of uh, at the end of your hand so it, it doesn't slip out. But it also fits really nicely in the palm of the hand. Uh, this faceting here nestles itself, butts itself in really nice if you're going to use this in sort of a um, a pushing saber grip like this, um, whether it is uh, you're fighting, which you're probably not, or using it to to cut into something tough like a, like a big thick clamshell package or something. Um, it fits very nicely like that. It also happens to fit very nicely in reverse grip. Uh, I have medium-sized hands. If you have giant hands, it might get a little bit lost. Uh, but for me, it fits perfectly across my palm for um, sort of a more tactical uh, fighting grip with this. But the cool thing about it is you can also just flip it around. And it's totally symmetrical, except for right here, obviously. Uh, but it's pretty much symmetrical, and you can have a great Pakal-style uh, grip on this knife. Um, 
this knife, which is wickedly sharp. This reminds me of a um, a Microtech in how it has sort of an oblique approach, but is so damn sharp. It's like, uh, you know, it might not be super slicey because of the blade geometry, but it is super sharp. My God. Um, yeah, so this knife comes in this uh, green and orange G10. It also comes in a really tasteful sort of tan and white G10. And then uh, a, a space-aged carbon fiber. And then lastly, a beautiful Tsukamaki style wrap or ray skin uh, lace wrap. Really beautiful work. Uh, uh, one thing about Michael Jarvis's work is that it is so... You hear people talk about clean. It's so clean. Well, his stuff is so clean, uh, not only in the design, but in the execution. And uh, this this takes the cake. So uh, I am loving this knife. All right. That is the Bowie, pocket Bowie, from new from Michael Jarvis and Auxiliary Manufacturing. Next up, a big uh, release from Demco Knives this past year. Uh, another fixed blade, that is the Armature 4. The Armature 4 series uh, has a lot of special aspects to it, one of them being the sheath, which is totally disassemblable, so you can clean it in the field if you have a screwdriver or a multi-tool, um, if you get sand or crap in there. Uh, this is, it, it It comes with a uh, with a drop, uh, drop loop thing. This is uh, just a clip I put on it for household carry. Um, but besides the sheath, <laughs> this thing is incredible. It comes in five different blade styles, uh, a drop point like this, which has a bayonet grind. Uh, and this one, as you can see, is serrated, but they also have a non-serrated version, but it also has that top bit ground, which I love. Keep, keep doing that. Uh, it comes in a tanto and then a serrated tanto and then a uh, straight edge clip point, plain edge clip point. Uh, does not have a serrated clip point. Very nice symmetrical rubberized handle, which very con thoughtfully and considerate with a lot of consideration puts jimping on the top so you can index it in the dark. You know uh, which way is up and down without having to touch the edge. Also gives you that jimping on the back so you know if you have uh, the edge out or the main edge out or the main edge in. And uh, I think that is great. I think all symmetrical dagger style handles should have such a feature. Especially if you're going to go all tactical. You know, this is definitely a night ops knife. You know, I'm joking. I've never been on a night op before unless you count vandalizing golf courses. Uh, this is black traction coated 80 CRV um, 2, which is a tough steel that you're seeing in outdoor knives more and more full tang tang protrudes through the bottom these are 80 bucks guys 80 bucks um and uh the demcos use some of their very well-worn uh taiwanese contacts to make these so these are oem'd in taiwan and we all know that that means quality Taiwanese knives tend to be incredible. Uh, that grippy texture is nice and does not interfere with like a shirt if you're carrying this under the shirt. And then in cross section, it's got those uh, Coke bottle, that Coke bottle shape. Second to last knife here is the Off Grid Knives Cayman XXL buoy. Uh, I've been waiting for this knife and am so thrilled with it. Uh, I saw. Kerry um, Orifice of Off Grid Knives showing this one off. Um, I don't know. Maybe it was at the very beginning of the year or the end of last year. And I just like, oh, man, it's it's the obvious extension of the line. So it started with the Cayman EDC folding knife with a blade that looks just like this. And then they made the four inch version, one of my favorite off grid knives. And I thought, oh man, make a fixie. And he did seven inches of D2 blade steel, um, just a nice chunk. Um, this is about a uh, three sixteenths of an inch. Uh, also, no, it's not. No, it's not. I, I would have to, let me see. <laughs> Sorry to get off the rails. It's a little bit thinner than that, which actually makes it uh, very, very nice and very sharp. Like all off-grid knives, super sharp and thin behind the edge. Um, look at how broad this is like a two-inch broad blade with pretty thin blade stock. And a full one inch of that is saber ground. So it's wickedly thin behind 
the edge. I love this knife. If you love a Bowie knife and you want to get one in the collection, uh, these are very reasonably priced. I would I would go check one out. Oh, again, yes, we have the Off Grid Knives um, uh, affiliate link. You could do that through. All right, so that is the Off Grid Cayman XL. It looks cool even when you do this, Lou. like this. Like that could be the thumbnail for this. Love that knife. Okay. Uh, sorry, you had to witness that, but welcome to my world. Okay, last up, this one, man, left quite an impression this year. This is the Puzan Predator Hunter Bowie from uh, from Tough. Oh my God, work tough knives, work tough gear knives. Uh, I was just uh, st stammering because I looked. I, I I put this away wet. Apparently, uh, there's I see a little bit of little bit of something right here. Uh, but this is a fun one to bang on. Uh, I use this sometimes as the family fire pit knife. It doesn't get much other use than that, or just to be around and be impressive. Uh, I always have this on the table for Thursday night knives in case it comes up because it's just, it's a showstopper. Uh, you got 12 inches of SK 85. Uh, it's about two and a half inches broad. It is really, really sharp. You know, it's not a big, it is a, a quarter inch thick, but it's so broad that by the time you're down to the edge, it's pretty thin, I'd say. Um, very nice and slicey. And this I thought was going to be uncomfortable, but it is very comfortable to put the fingers, the finger through there. If you're doing your quote unquote close up work, you know, you're, you're making punji sticks or whatever. Uh, I love the horse hoof handle. It, feels great when you're chopping with it because it extends far out for the palm so you got the hook here and then you got the palm uh bounce so really really nice uh so yeah this is i don't want to say it's my favorite knife of the year but i would say it's the most impressive knife of the year and all of these knives have been impressive and i got a lot more uh 2023 releases than i expected and i'm very happy to show these off um what were your favorite? Let me know. Drop it in the comments below. I always find that interesting um, when, when we talk about that a lot on Thursday Night Knives, which you should definitely join us for tomorrow night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. And then, of course, uh, join us every Sunday for a great interview and conversation with a knife guy. All right. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.